To do factored form to vertex form, uh, you have to take the information you know in this form and use it to find the vertex in order to write that formula. So a uh, vertex form looks like this. And the number that goes here, right, is you end up with a pod equal to zero at the vertex equal to zero at the vertex. And then you end up with a number here that is either the maximum or the minimum value of the parabola, which happens to be the y-coordinate of the vertex. So I need to know about the vertex based on this particular function. And this form isn't giving me the vertex. It's giving me the x-intercepts. So I'm going to have an x-intercept when this equals zero, and I'm going to have an x-intercept when this equals zero. So that would be at four and at eight. So if I were to just sort of quick sketch this thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I have an x-intercept here, and I have an x-intercept here. Now, if you can see every parabola we've ever sketched in your head, the vertex is always dead center, right? It's right on the line of symmetry. So I just have to find where the line of symmetry would be, right? Halfway between four and eight is six. So I know that, therefore, uh, the vertex is at x equals six. And so x minus 6 would equal 0 at the vertex. So that's my pod for here. I've got that part. I also need a transformation factor. As always, transformation factors are the same in every single form. And now I just need to find the maximum value of the parabola. Well, fortunately, I have an equation that spits out y values if you know an x. So if I take this factored form and I evaluate it when x is 6, I end up with 3 multiplied by 6 minus 4 is 2, 6 minus 8 is negative 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. So that will be the y value of my vertex. So I just have to park that in, and I'm good to go. So, in summary, you find where the x intercepts are. Once you've got them, you have to find where the axis of symmetry would be and build your pod. And then you take the x value of that axis of symmetry and plunk it back into the equation, and the equation will work out a y value for you. So I'm going to clear this off. We'll try another one. Name is a fraction. So I need my basic vertex form parabola. I know that the transformation factor is going to match the transformation factor no matter what form I'm in. Now I need to figure out where the x value of the vertex is so I can build this little pod. So I will have x intercepts from this thing when x plus 3 equals 0 and when x minus 7 equals 0. So that's at negative 3 and at 7. So if you just draw yourself a little axis, 2, 3, that's here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spaces between them. Half of that would be five. So one, two, three, four, five. The axis of symmetry is here when x equals two. So x is two on the line of symmetry. That means x minus two will equal zero on the line of symmetry. So there's my pod. 
And to get this number at the back, the max min value of the parabola, I'm just going to have to park my x value into this equation and evaluate. 2 plus 3, 2 minus 7. Negative 1 quarter. 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 subtract 7 is negative 5. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. A negative times a negative is a positive. And this is just asking you to do 1 times 25 divided by 4. So if you work that out, you end up with 6.25. So 6.25 goes back here, and I've built the vertex form of this particular equation. Now, a couple of things to notice. First off, this didn't come out as a whole number. It's okay. It doesn't have to. The transformation factor and where these x intercepts are happen to put the vertex not on the grid. It is horizontally. It lands right at 2 this way. But the y value is, is somewhere in between 6 and 7. That's OK. Second thing to notice, when you did this, you put this axis of symmetry in here, and you ended up with the same number, but one is positive and one is negative. That happened in the last example, too. We had 2 and negative 2. That's not an accident. That will always happen if you have found the correct axis of symmetry. So watch for this happening to you when you get to this step. If this one says 3, this one says negative 3. It has to be like that. 7, negative 7. OK, I'm going to clean this off, do one more example, and then I think we're good for practice problems. All right, so we need our standard setup for a vertex form. I know that my transformation factor goes out in front. I know I'm going to have an x-intercept when this equals 0, and another one when this equals 0, which gives me x is negative 5 and x is 8. So on a number line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 between them. So you try to cut 13 in half, and it doesn't go evenly. You end up with 6.5. So if I go back 6.5 from here, I end up at 1.5. So up 6.5 from here gets me to 1.5. Down 6.5 from here gets me to 1.5. That's where my axis of symmetry is. It's not a clean number, but that's OK. It doesn't have to be. I still need a pod that's equal to 0 at the vertex. So there's my pod here. And I'm still going to need to feed this x value into the y equation in order to figure out the y value of the vertex. Uh, uh, sorry, 1.5 plus 5 and 1.5 subtract 8. And you're keeping in mind from the last example that when I'm done this little calculation here, whatever number I end up in this pod should match this pod, except one will be positive, one will be negative. So let's cross our fingers and hope that works out. 1.5 and 5 is 6.5. 1.5 subtract 8 is negative 6.5. So I must have picked the correct axis of symmetry because that happened. 6.5 times 6.5. I'm not going to be able to do this morning in the brain. So I got 42.25. And if I double that, I'll end up with negative 
So my minimum value for this particular parabola is negative 84.5. That goes at the back. And we're done. It's not clean. You've got decimals in there, but that's okay. Those places do exist on the grid and they're a bit trickier to find, but they are allowed. So it's possible that your uh, central point will be a decimal. It did not change the process. Still build your pod, that goes there. Still plug the number up into the Y value generator and get that. And you're good to go for the practice problems.